whoever is listening to me right now or who is a big fan of Pakistani series or dramas uh, would clearly know her. I mean, the first time I've seen her work was in 2008, I think um, it was called Do Rahe. And then right after that, you know, I started watching um, uh, Malal and Dam and Jackson Heights, Matai Jan, Niyat, and of course, um, who could forget her movie, you know, uh, starring uh, Nandita Das, uh, Ramchand Pakistani, which, uh, which was so moving and which was, you know, which has won uh, multiple awards. And then we've seen uh, Dubara Per Se. So, I mean, um, I mean, I, I, I've been fortunate enough to have met her once in US, but uh, let's, let's get to know a little bit more about her, about her um, career, how did it all start and how does she keep on going? Uh, let's let's get to know all about her. So without any further ado, let's get started with my guest tonight. She's none other than Mehreen Jafar. So I'll go straight to the question. So, okay. I know you've been in this, um, you know, your, your journey with filmmaking and storytelling, and it has uh, all started almost about in the, in the 90s when you uh, went to UCLA and you decided to, you know, pursue a career in the television and film. Uh, and, and followed by that, you have done so many, so many, so many TV dramas and films over the years. And um, what keeps you going, really? Like, how come you don't stop and you still keep on going and coming with such amazing uh, scripts? How, what keeps you going? What keeps me going is I have to pay the rent. <laughs> okay. This, this is my job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, but uh, also, this is something. Uh, you know, I'm one of the fortunate ones that gets to do what one loves and, uh, you know, can that is my profession as well. You know, a lot of people, unfortunately, are stuck in jobs that they don't like, but they have to be in it. So this way, you know, I am blessed. Yeah. And uh, what keeps me going is that, you know, there are so many stories to, to tell and there are endless stories of the human condition. And um, as long as there are those that exist, I'll keep yeah. wanting to tell them. Okay. Um, okay. So, I mean, um, I mean, I know quite a lot about you because I've always been watching your shows and I've done my own research and I always see your interviews. But then again, just for my Bangladeshi audience, I would um, like to again introduce you in an in, in, in a all new way. So if we could know a little bit about your childhood, I mean, we do know that, you know, your father was from the advertising and into writing. So you clearly were always surrounded by, you know, you were privileged to be, be around, you know, people like actors or, you know, artists. And so could we know a little bit about the childhood? Like, how was it like? And were you intrigued at that point, you know, that this is, this is what I want to do when I grow up? Yeah, and uh, I, again, I was in a, you know, I was born in a family, like uh, my father uh, made Pakistan's first uh, English language film in 1974. Mm -hmm. I was a girl in it. I had a mute role in it. I was playing the harmonium. <laughs> I uh, never knew that. Then, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was called Beyond the Last Mountain. And then mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, he, you know, he's uh, he ran a very successful ad agency together with my mother. Mm -hmm. um, so after school, school and college I used to after college especially I used to go and sort of sit and intern there uh, okay. and just try to get uh, you know uh, get some uh, experience but before that uh, we were always in a house where you know there were home videos being taken yeah. and I was surrounded by cameras and then that's where I got my first exposure so I used to take those big VCR cameras yeah to college school and yeah. shoot my friends and 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 torture them <laughs> and make music videos I used to torture my younger brother and my cousins and try and have them act it out yeah yeah uh, so uh, but I was lucky again because it was I was surrounded by that world yeah so it, it became easy but I do I did soon realize that advertising was not my cup of tea mm -hmm. and I wanted to get into storytelling like narrative okay so I went to UCLA uh, for a couple of years and uh, mm -hmm. I did my uh, you know the, what is called the continuing education because unfortunately I was horrific in math and I mm -hmm. could never give it for my O-level. So okay. again, I could never give my SATs or my GREs because I was so pathetic. <laughs> so I could never go to co a proper college. <laughs> in, so in right US, after O-levels or did after A-levels you went? No, no. I, no, no, I went to a college in Pakistan, St. Yeah. Joseph's College. I did yeah. my bachelor's there. And then right after that, I went for a two-year program to UCLA yeah. to study film and TV. And then awesome. after that, I just came back. And that's how, you know, my journey started into, mm -hmm. uh, into primarily starting with the world of television. 
so it's it's something like i mean you know you always had it in you like for, as you just said you know you used to always document your friends or your you know cousins or to make music videos so you 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 were you were into you know, it um, education of course makes a big difference but what still intrigued you to go there and study i mean because many of may you we know many of the filmmakers who you know um do not have the privilege or maybe they don't go and they you know they learn from their experiences so what was the key thing that was like you know that's it i would and going to ucla is one of the finest schools so i mean you you went one of the to the one of the best ones so um was it important or was it something like you wanted to learn the the craft in a, in a, from a school so so i think at that time uh, there weren't too many institutions in pakistan that were teaching film or mm-hmm. cinema or tv yeah and so i felt this was the one place i could get some kind of grounding and some kind of basic knowledge yeah uh, it, it's always helpful i don't believe you have to go to film school to become a filmmaker yeah but it's always helpful to know because it is a craft at the end of the day it's not just i wake up one day and i want to tell a story there are things you need to learn yeah in terms of you know how to write a script or where to put the camera or what is lighting and all of that yeah. you know yeah. so it's important to get that basic knowledge yeah um and that was the only place i thought uh, you know it was was not that expensive it was mm-hmm. i could get into it mm-hmm. and these were very valuable uh, lessons that i learned in los angeles because not only did i do uh, tv and film classes i also managed mm-hmm. to you know take other classes in philosophy or religion just because yeah. i could yeah so it just yeah. opened my mind up and it gave yeah. me you know, access so uh, even though it was two years uh, i think it was unforgettable I've, i mean the first drama that i've seen of yours was um <clears throat> uh where there was ditti gupta and few other artists as well i forgot the names but it was malal uh yeah that was one of the first ones i remember and then of course one of my most favorite ones is of course jackson heights and i've seen your ramchand pakistan as well and so when it came to i mean um when i see your dramas obviously you have had so many dramas but when it comes to film i mean after ramchand pakistan i think I think the second film was released in 2016 right is it okay so and that's where i've met you i remember that was in uh, dobara phir se screening so why such a long time i mean i i do know film movies are is is a bigger bigger thing in the whole picture but again why did it take still why did it take that long uh i think you've answered you? your own question films are very tough <laughs> to make and especially yeah. in pakistan and i'm sure it's the same in bangladesh that our industry is uh, you know it's continuously trying to improve and get get revived uh mm. but uh, unfortunately in the last you know for three four decades it hasn't had that support and yeah. it has been doing recently it, it was picking up uh it's all a matter of you know i mean there are not enough uh, funders available there are not enough cinemas there are people who've done really well also yeah. but it's not a it's not a vibrant flourishing film industry yet yeah yeah even though there have been a lot of good films uh, produced yeah so i just felt uh, you know it's the the opportunities to make the cinema i want to make mm. uh, i don't think i uh, got those that kind of funding at that point but you yeah. know again uh, post covid i hope i hope to god that cinema does survive Yeah. And then again yeah. covid put a stop on uh, otherwise i had been working on an idea for a film as well but now let's see what happens yeah. next year yeah uh, i had another question regarding the films as well so if i see uh, dobara phir se and then if i see ramchand pakistan so they're completely two different you know storytelling two different messages two different look and feel and that's what surprises me i'm like well, how can one person like mehrin jabbar make you know a film like that which is critically acclaimed which touched you which made you cry and upset and you know you make move you and make you feel like you know as a, every filmmaker they always want to show a story like that and then at the same time you know you made a dobara phir se which was you know uh, glamorous colorful full of love and you know it's commercially successful and that's the kind of film we again we want to watch i mean it's it so so um how do you decide and um like i what is it is it is it even necessary for a person to decide ke you know bas mujhe aise hi film banane this is the kind of film i would want to make or you know it it just depends on and on the maker like do you have a choice like that because you just made something completely two different kind of film so 
I don't know if I'm making sense, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, uh, absolutely. They are very, very different kinds of films, and I yeah. think uh, Dwara Pirse was uh, they were the, the difference between the two films was that Ramchand was uh, produced by a bunch of uh, about twenty producers who yeah. gave us money to make that film. It was a yeah. passion project, yeah, uh, which you know my father uh, actually came up with this idea of mm-hmm. Ramchand Pakistani, and he's the one who convinced me to do this. Yeah, uh, and so that was uh, the the genesis or the intent of Ramchand is very different. The Bara Pirse was uh, obviously it's financed by ARI uh, Network, which is a mm-hmm. huge production house in Pakistan. Yeah, and that intent was to try and make my version of a commercial film. So, right. Uh, that's why the two were different. Um, but I think a story, and I I I don't want to box films into commercial non commercial. I think a good story is a good story, whether it's told. you know in in this way yeah. or that way it can have songs in it it can it doesn't need to have songs in it yeah so i think and also every time as one grows up and you know maybe next year i want to tell a very different kind of story which has got yeah. nothing to do with bara phir se and ramchand yeah. so because we are human beings and we are filmmakers uh, every year or every decade maybe some other story draws you in you know so yeah. let's see i i don't yeah. know what the future if i will make a film i hope i will but i, I don't know what kind um, of um as we always tend to do this with even actresses or actors you know we try to always place them in a box like you know we thought she is this type and you know he's that type of an actor and we do with filmmakers as well like you know we okay, you know we didn't expect this from you and um we actually shouldn't we should have the freedom to create whatever what you believe in so that's that's amazing i just when it comes to um your scripts like um your dramas for example even if you see jackson heights or you see you know uh mataya jan or niyat how do you how do you do these castings like is is it initially is it you or like do you always like what makes you think okay you know chalo you know for this character i need this so and so person and or some or is it just you know of course how you know because i've been in the industry for a long time as well so i just have an idea it's always it's also you know whether you get the dates and everything you know things things work on that way as well so how how do you cast your i mean i know for you uh, it's it's not people would always say yes to your offers but then again mm. how do you how do you no know, i'm sure everyone will I'm sure no, people no. will be like a marriage job bar I am on but no no, no. <laughs> I wish it was that easy no, no it's not that I think casting is uh, you know I I think casting is, is such an important part of uh, a project because you can really a cast can make or break a, a story and the way I personally take a lot of interest in casting and I try and do it according to obviously what the character requirement is yeah. and yes the other factors like dates available and that is the the uh things that are not yeah. in your control right but you try and and i look at uh, really who is the best and also i try and not mm. typecast people so mm. uh, you know not try and take the same person who's done maybe the same role 100 times maybe you know think outside the box box yeah you know, give those actors that uh, that uh, range you know it's not yeah. necessary if someone's done comedy that's all they want to do for the rest of their lives yeah so try and kind of give them the flexibility yeah. and and think uh, of yeah as again outside the box so i work in conjunction with the producers mm-hmm. and the producer and kind of jointly cast i mean i it. so i think i i saw this interview after a long time so uh, it was something where you were speaking about i think that's something i've also shared on facebook yeah so uh, you were talking about episodes they're making it for so long and you know which is unnecessary and i just remember i think up until i mean last one two years as well like i was i was very much hooked into few pakistani dramas and and then recently i was just telling my mom i was like are ye what kind of dramas are you showing me why is it so long why is it why would show me the old ones or show me something good or so i always ask my mom because she's like a big sucker for pakistani drama so she knows it all so she was like okay you must watch this so you know she always says okay you watch the old ones so what is it that's changing i mean i know we need to make money and we need more episodes and everything but where do we how do we strike this balance like what do we do now how do you deal with channels or producers and you know it's difficult but very very good question i think uh, i was just talking to someone the other day on how the decline of our dramas has happened in the last few years and yeah. it is sad because we have all the ingredients we have really good actors we have excellent uh, writers and and 
you know, we have the, we've, we've grown in terms of our technical infrastructure also. We've got good yeah. cameras and, you know, it's gone of in course. an upward direction. But I feel what has happened is that uh, mostly, and I do blame channel heads, I do pl blame the content heads of these channels that they have become fixated that they think that this is the only kind of story that can work and give them the ratings and yeah. give them the money. And therefore they refuse to, again, think of something else that might actually uh, blow someone away. And Netflix is a terrible example to give uh, because that's an OTT platform, but uh, you know, Queen's Gambit is the largest watch show. And yeah. who would have thought a woman playing chess would get any ratings? Like, you know, yeah. not, not, not a lot of people play chess. Yeah. Not a lot of women oriented dramas uh, get so much acclaim. So yeah, again, they thought they took a gamble on it. It was a very well told story. Yeah. So our channels need to get back to the strength of what used to be Pakistani drama, which mm. I really feel personally. It's sad for me to say that since my history and my all that I have earned in terms of you know experience and my work has been from the TV industry. But yeah. I myself am not uh, unfortunately interested in working in television anymore because of the kind of scripts that are being offered. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hope this changes because um, the, uh, I think it just makes, it, I, I mean, I do understand they make money, but eventually it's just making everyone so frustrated, the filmmakers, writers, actors, and you end up compromising and you are like, you eventually get sick of it. And that's, that's the last thing. You and wouldn't... also, I think uh, I, what is happening is I think they think that this is doing really well in the masses, but yeah. you realize that if you, produce and I keep saying make seven of these kinds of dramas but then make three or four which yeah. are different kinds so you have a healthy balance of content available on us um, speaking of the OTT platform what is the current uh, show that's going on right now that you're working on is it on the it is on the OTT platform right for Z uh, well currently the Z one is Ek Juti Love Story which is mm -hmm. on Z5 and that okay. uh, was released last month uh, mm -hmm. that was a pleasure to work on and awesome. uh uh, there are a couple of, there's a one a short uh, digital, uh, a short series I did called Behem that's uh, currently going to go on a Pakistani digital platform that is being launched in December called Rinstra. Rinstra, and, okay. Uh, and let's hope, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited about the future of the web uh, in the world yeah. and hope we get more opportunities, all of us. Like as you came from a film and uh, advertising background, so of course if things were easier for you, um, you went to a good school, so you were privileged to you know, um, do things the way you want it, but still there are a lot of other problems like for a woman to tell their story or even today, there's so many women who who are talented, who are brilliant, who are trying to tell their story, but but it is very difficult for them. How, what would you, what would you, what would you say for them? Like, what would you advise for them? Like how to, it is a, this, this industry is very challenging and also, extremely it can it can it can crush you and can also you know uh, the highs are really high and the lows are really low so what would you advise to people who are interested in this industry as a writer or a director or an actress or um yeah so you are right this industry is brutal it's, yeah. <laughs> it's not easy yeah yeah so i would say number one is have a nerves of steel keep saying that i've been saying it over the years uh do not get affected. Uh, it is the one industry or the one profession, uh, like any, I think, artistic professions where you put something you create out there for the world to judge and like or not like, and it can really affect you and hurt you, demoralize you, or it can take you and uh, make you a total arrogant, uh, yeah. unbearable person, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so you have to find that balance within you to take uh, and take in uh, healthy criticism, constructive criticism, uh, enjoy the moment where you are being appreciated but remember you're only as good as your last project and you have to keep working hard you have to keep learning you have to keep striving ahead you can't just sit down and relax and or uh, you know expect to be worshipped if you've done something amazing yeah so that's one about the profession now number two is yes it is um, it's not just Pakistan I'm sure it's Bangladesh it's in the US as well that women generally have not had the same kind of opportunities there yeah. is discrimination it's always been a boys club everywhere yeah, but things are changing. The good thing is things are changing. I feel in Pakistan because there are a lot more universities now offering film and media courses. There are a lot of young women coming out yeah. from there, from yeah. all classes. Yeah. Uh, so you know, I've I've worked with so many in the whether the assistant directors or production designers or stylists. 
mm -hmm. they are coming from all kinds of all parts of society. Yeah. And I feel that is the future, uh, which wasn't the case when I started out. There are far more. Uh, so course. and the thing is to you know to really believe in your work, to not get distracted by, uh, not get distracted, and also not get bullied by harassment, because that's yeah. something major thing that can happen. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of women. I mean, look at it in the U.S. with the Weinstein case. It takes years. Yeah. You sometimes you stay silent because you can't speak out. Yeah. But if that happens, and it does happen in all industries, I think the key is to uh, not not take it yeah. and try as well as as much as you can to, you know, either extricate from the situation or go to the to the relevant authorities or something yeah. to make a case. Uh, yeah. Because the more you take it, the more bitter you're going to get. I think. Yeah. You, he is to try and tackle i know it's not easy it's easier said than mm -hmm. done mm -hmm. but you have to do it now in order to um not have that resentment and anger and shame go going forward that and number three i think there's also uh hopefully there's more acceptance of this profession in families yeah that it's not okay okay you want to be an actor oh my god what is that uh i think huh. because it is paying well even now it yeah. is it is a respectable profession yeah like yeah that. Yeah. So I think if more more people I hope are getting are more used to the fact that their uh, daughter is in th this industry in whatever capacity. This was again something uh, which I think asked you three years back when I met you. So that was like, when are we going to see Bangladeshi stories or characters in your work? Like any any plans as such where you're open to or you know stories or offers where. You can collaborate and you can create shows. I mean, for the OTT platforms, or have you ever thought about it, or no? You know, I've been thinking about it recently because I've been reading yeah. about Bangladesh uh, recently. In fact, uh, and yeah. that would be just an incredible because it hasn't happened, you know. Hmm. And I hope we get the opportunity. I don't know uh, where one could we could film it in Dhaka. We could film it in Karachi. Yeah. Uh, and I absolutely agree that there hasn't been enough collaboration. There's been yeah. more with India, Pakistan, or yeah. India, Bangladesh than with Bangladesh, Pakistan. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there really should be. Uh, uh, I, you know, I would love to. I'm not sure. I'm not actually that familiar with OTT platforms in Bangladesh. Yeah. Uh, I know we don't have as many, and we are still in the process of figuring it out in Pakistan to yeah. have a viable OTT platform. Yeah. But even in our, I feel in our TV industry, we should have. Uh, Bangladeshi characters. It's just, you know, you have to put it in a story where it makes sense. Yeah. Where either someone's visiting Pakistan or you meet in some other parts of, I think in the US would be fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Because that's yeah. an opportunity where all people from South Asia can meet and, you know, and become friends. Yeah, absolutely. Because, yeah, as you just said, because of Kolkata, because we have the Bengali language, we see a lot of India and Bangladesh collaborating for movies and a lot of uh, India Pakistan collaborating as well. But we never, I've never seen Bangladesh and Pakistan collaborating with films and stories and, you know. Uh, yeah. Excellent. I think one should think about it. Um, this is a common question. Again, I ask all my guests at the end of the show. So it's something like, what story is a good story to you for screen? I know there are different genres, there's different styles, but still, like, just what is a good story to you? A uh, good story is something that moves me in either way, whether it makes me laugh, it makes me think or cry. Uh, I'm committed to it. I can uh, relate to it. Maybe not myself, but I can access an emotion that it's trying yeah. to convey. Uh, and it's it's a magical experience where I forget the world. For me, that's a story that I can just be focused in and honed in yeah. and, uh, and and see the human condition being played out. So it can be in yeah. any form. Yeah, amazing. Well, thank you so much, Marian. I mean, uh, I have one question, by the way. Oh. Uh, are Pakistani serials watched in Bangladesh, apart from you and your mother? Are there <laughs> other people who watch it? <laughs> there are lots of people. There's a huge fan followers from. There uh, is. And yes, there are is. Are they dubbed in Bengali or you watch it in Urdu? No, no, no. We watch it in Urdu. And of course, we have the ARY channel and um, other a couple of other private channels as well. Um, but as far as I know that, as far as I know that, I think in last couple of years, I mean, audiences are, here are also really upset. They're like, you know, because they were very much hooked to Pakistani channels. So now they're a bit like, okay, where are these shows? Like, where are these going? Like, and I understand, you know, it's similar. Like, you know, the quality, you can see it. Like, it's 
it's being compromised so we we do complain as well we are like watch ek jhooti love story i think you like it of course it but it's Please on do. it's on it's on ott it's on z z5 yes. yeah absolutely i will definitely do that i'm so grateful thank you so much for coming to my show giving me time so and inshallah thank you so much it was a pleasure thank you marin i'll speak to you soon inshallah stay safe bye bye you too you too thank you marin allah